When I faced a very disappointing rejection this morning, I knew that I had to sit down and make this video because rejection is something that I feel like we will all experience at some point in our life, whether that's big or small. And specifically to us very, very highly sensitive people, sometimes it can be really, really hard to not take rejection personally. So I wanted to sit down, talk about some of the things that have helped me and some of the things that have helped me navigate this journey because it can be really, really difficult. So the first thing I want to bring light to is uh, I want to talk about how highly sensitive people take rejection. Now I will say that I can't speak to the contrary of this. I don't know what it's like to be not a highly sensitive person taking rejection. I can only speak to my experience and I'm a very, very highly sensitive person. I take things very, very personally and even though I've gotten better over the years, uh, it's still like that initial sting still really hurts and it's still hard for me to see past the situation and see what's actually happening. So I want to preface this video by saying that, um, that I'm speaking from that perspective and especially to other highly sensitive people out there who tend to take things very personally and tend to over criticize themselves about things that are out of their control. So there is this um, I feel like sometimes, and even if you're not a highly sensitive person, sometimes it can be easy to look within and be like, well, what is it about me that they don't like? What is it about me that uh, caused you know that, that person to say no to a date or that person not to like me or that uh, job not to accept me or to that college that didn't accept me? What is it about me that I need to change that caused them to reject me? And while I do think it's good to look within and to like always be improving yourself, I will say this, that a a person not liking you in return, a person not reciprocating your feelings, a job not accepting you, a college not accepting you, is not an indicator that there's something wrong with you. It does not mean that your value is any less. It does not mean that your worth is any less. And this is something that's really, really helped me get through this. Nedra Twab, which is such a fantastic boundaries therapist, uh, I will link her Instagram in the description below. She talks about this. Be brave enough to be disliked. And for highly sensitive people, that is such a difficult task. But she talks about being brave enough to be disliked because it makes sense that all of who I am is not for every single person out there. And that's something that I'm gonna have to accept. And everybody is not for me either. I'm not gonna like every single person out there because we all have such different personalities and I get along better with certain personalities than I do with others. You have to understand too that no matter who you are, no matter how kind, no matter how great, no matter how nice you are, there's always going to be somebody that does not like you. And especially I've learned that since starting YouTube that there, were, no matter how kind I am, no matter how respectful I am, no matter how sensitive I am, there will always be somebody who doesn't like me. And that's simply because all of who I am is not for every single person out there. It, it makes sense because we all have preferences and it doesn't mean that I'm bad and me not liking somebody else, it doesn't mean that that person's bad. I mean, it can, you know, if, the, if it's like a common theme that people don't like them, it can mean that, but it doesn't necessarily have to mean that. It simply means I have a preference. Just like if I prefer to eat spaghetti over pizza, it doesn't mean that pizza is bad. It means that I have a preference to eat spaghetti. And I feel like we can, I, I know it sounds ridiculous to compare people to food, but we can kind of apply that same logic that, you know, just because I have a preference to be around somebody else other than a particular individual, it doesn't mean that that individual is bad. It simply means that I have a preference and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, the, the, on the contrary to this, uh, there's a struggle because you think, oh, if that person doesn't like me, if they don't like to be around me, if they don't want to go on a date with me, if that job rejected me, then there must be something wrong with me. There must be just something wrong that like, I'm just not good enough. And I want you to know that you are good enough. And just because a job, a college, a guy, a girl, whatever, didn't see that does not mean that your worth is any less. So I wanted to touch on that real quick, but as far as dealing with rejection, I'm gonna kind of go through the stages of this and talk about what's helped me. So first and foremost, I'm a person naturally uh, that I try to avoid pain. And I feel like we all do in some capacity, but I definitely am somebody who tries to avoid the pain. And what I really realized is that I really need to allow myself to sit with that, to sit with the pain. Um, because initially when you're rejected from somebody that you liked, somebody who you had a romantic interest in, maybe it was even a friendship to a person that you really, really vibed with as a friend and they just didn't really, 
they're kind of being distant from you or even they say outright like I don't think this friendship is gonna work or that college that you really wanted to get into or that job or whatever like there's so many different rejection things that I can speak to but um, these are the things that come to the top of my mind initially when you get that rejection letter or you get that text from that guy saying hey I'm just not into you or you get that text from that friend saying hey this isn't gonna work initially it's gonna sting and it's hard and I know like it's it's something that I wish I could avoid like it's going to sting like it's kind of like pulling off a band-aid slowly like you know it's gonna hurt when you pull that band-aid off and then it'll heal eventually but we'll get there so I really had to allow myself to sit with that and be like oh, dang it really really hurt that that guy didn't like me or that that job rejected me or that my school didn't accept me that really really hurts and it's hard and sometimes you need a little bit to sit with that now depending on the rejection intensity like the level um, obviously like a, a guy breaking up with you after a four-year relationship is going to be a lot more difficult to get over than something a little bit smaller like let's say like a guy you've been talking to uh, doesn't want to go any on any more dates with you obviously the intensity of that is a little bit different so there is no uh, timeline for grieving so really really sit with that um, sit with that pain and say oh, that really really hurts and it's really really hard and it's okay for me to feel sad it's okay for me to feel worthless in this moment but I can't stay there I have to get up and I have to say you know what that really really hurt and it's okay for me to feel upset it's okay for me to grieve but I have to get up, I have to keep going, I have to go to my job, I have to do my work, I have to do my school. I have to find hobbies to do on my own. I have to find things that will help me cope with this. Me like sitting with that disappointment, sitting with that grief is something that I've really had to work on in myself because as a kid, I feel like we're not allowed to feel our emotions. You know, I, I cannot count the amount of times I was told to stop crying or I'd be given something to cry about. Uh, I was told that I wasn't allowed to feel upset, I wasn't allowed to feel angry, I wasn't allowed to talk back, I wasn't allowed to roll my eyes, I wasn't allowed to be disrespectful. And the problem with that is that it didn't teach me how to cope with um, losses that I'm going to inevitably deal with in adulthood. And it's okay for me to feel the way that I'm feeling. And it's okay for me to cry if I need to journal, if I just need to like sob my eyes out and journal for a little bit. Like it's okay for me to do that and it's perfectly natural because I'm a human being and you're a human being too and as mankind we need to rehumanize ourselves and normalize you know feelings and emotions and things that humans deal with on an everyday basis so as far as like moving forward again knowing that this person who rejected you whoever it is they don't define your worth your worth comes from God and God alone and I am a woman made in the image and likeness of God and my worth does not come from any man, it does not come from any job, it does not come from any boss, it does not come from any manager, it doesn't come from anything else except God. And God willed your life. He did not create you by accident. If you need to like write that down in a journal and say, I am a person made in the image and likeness of God and I am infinitely valuable because I'm made in him, his image and because he willed my life and he is the, uh, he himself is goodness and he willed my life that's who gives me worth not anything else in this world because i think that it's so easy for us to have this vision of like the things in this world are what's going to give me value you know my job my career my love life uh, my family and those things although they're great and i don't i'm not saying be careless about those things but at the end of the day they don't give you value god and god alone gives you value and so really knowing that I have an infinite worth and I have infinite value in Christ. The next thing I want to mention, I'm kind of just like all over the place here, but knowing that, thinking about all the people who do love you and do care about you and like listing, if you even need to list those people in a journal, like list the people that love you, that care about you, that want you to succeed. And when you really list out all those people who care about you, then you really start to put it in perspective and say, okay, well, who cares about Billy over here who doesn't care about me, who rejected me? Who cares? Because I'm reading all these people who care about me and the people that care about me outweigh tremendously this person who doesn't care about me. 
putting that into perspective and knowing that there are people who care about you. Even if you're feeling very, very alone and you're feeling like, I don't have any friends, I don't have anybody who cares about me, which I've been there, believe me. Just listing God and God alone, who cares about you, who loves you infinitely. He himself is goodness. He himself is the greatest. He is greater than anything on this earth. Uh, you know, infinitely greater than the whole entire outer space. Then you're like, okay, like when we really think about how great God is, and then knowing that he loves us infinitely, it really makes this other person just a tiny piece of dirt. Like, and not to like degrade that person or anything, but like, it just makes that person very, very small because we have a greater being that is looking out for us. The last thing I want to mention is that rejection is not the end all be all. Like it's not an, okay, end all be all, that's probably not the right way to say it. It's not the end for you. There are going to be jobs that will accept you. There are going to be people that will accept you for who you are, whether that's friendships, relationships, whatever. There's going to be a person who does see your value, who loves you for your sensitive soul. And I have, I've had to realize that, especially like with dating and rejection in that regard, is that even though a particular guy doesn't see my value, doesn't see my worth, doesn't see my sensitive soul and doesn't love me for that, there will be a guy who will come along and see me as a daughter made in the image and likeness of God. And he He'll appreciate my gentleness. He'll appreciate my sensitive soul. He'll appreciate that I'm sensitive to other people's feelings. At the end of the day, if somebody can't see that, then they're just not going to be for me. And I should be thankful that they showed me their true colors early on. So that way I can move on and I can move on to somebody who does see that in me and who does love me for that. And yeah, I may not find that tomorrow. I may not fi even find that in a year from now, but eventually things will get better and you'll get accepted into a college, into a job, be accepted by a group of friends or a friend. Um, you will find your people and your career and everything and everything will fall into place. And just because it's not happening right now in the second doesn't mean that it won't. And I think a perfect example of this is I faced a lot of rejection from friends, from guys when I was younger, um, going through high school. And guess what? I moved away. And those things, like I've forgotten about most of them, those things do not matter to me one bit now. I am moved on. I have friends who care about me, who love me. And those people who didn't don't mean anything to me. Like it, it literally does not matter to me now. And so I know that in the moment it does matter and I'm not discounting that. It's okay. Again, it goes back to what I said in the beginning. It's okay to feel your feelings. It's okay to feel upset or angry or whatever you need to feel. But knowing that eventually things will fall in place for you. There's joy, there's consolation ahead, and just because you're going through a patch of tessellation doesn't mean that it's never going to end. Um, without the rain, there would be no rainbow. So, And then one other thing I wanted to mention before I forget is that think about all the times you've had to reject somebody. I know that there's several different guys who have had interest in me where I've had to say, I'm so sorry, like I really enjoyed getting to know you, but unfortunately I just don't see us going forward romantically. Um, I'm not interested in a relationship, whatever. And I've had to reject a lot of people. And it's, I'm sure it was hard for them to hear that too, because I know that a lot of, like there were guys that really were into me that I wasn't into, and I'm sure that that hurt for them. And I've, I've said things like, I think you're a great guy. And I, I really, really hope that you find somebody who's, who's going to be just as into you as you're into her. And me not wanting a relationship with you does not reflect who you are. And even when I say it like that very, very kindly, I'm sure that it hurts their feelings. I'm sure that it's hard and it stings. And that's something that, you know, we've all, we all have to reject somebody at some point for some reason. And it's going to be hard for that person too. So life is just full of rejection and there's really, it's part of life and there's nothing you can do about it because, you know, that's just the world we live in where we ourselves have to reject people we're going to get rejected from other people and that's just how it's going to be and it's hard for us highly sensitive people to deal with it but just know that your worth is infinite your you are worth way more than any rejection that comes your way and just keep your heart up i really really hope you'll consider subscribing before you leave i love to talk about sex parenting relationships all sorts of different stuff so please subscribe to this channel i will also link my beauty channel in the description i'd really really appreciate it if you go over there and subscribe uh, even if that's not content you're interested in, hitting that subscribe button would really, really help me out. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.